Hey, welcome back. Episode 2 of Berkey on a Shop Stool. It's been a crazy week, but it's been fun. Let me run you through some of the details quick. Last Friday, I got a notification that uh, Gareth Branwin had included me in his tips column in Make Magazine again. And that's, I don't know, man, that, that always, I really respect Make Magazine and what they do with the maker fairs and everything. And it's just, in a small way, it's really cool to both contribute and to be acknowledged by Make Magazine. So I'll leave you a link on for that one. So on Monday, I recorded an episode of the Green Woodworker podcast with Donnie Carter. I think it's, it was really an interesting uh, conversation interview thing because it felt like it was about five minutes long and I, we went almost an hour. So it was just one of those cool times where it's, you know information is just flowing back and forth and it was pretty good fun. I think Donnie said it's going to be released on February 16th. So look for that. I'll leave a link to his podcast below. I did get a question this week from Don, who asked me about my opinions on using epoxies. He, had, he is just getting into it and has had some trouble with things setting up. And for you that know me, I'm a pretty much seat of my pants, do it as we go type of guy. But I will tell you this, when I deal with epoxies, you know, that's chemistry, man. I, to me, it's like math. You, you have to do it exactly right. So that's one time in my world where I don't, you know, futz with things too much. I just do what they tell me to do. So really, for me, I use the best epoxies I can afford. I use a lot of West systems because, to me, they just have it down right. I'm not saying that anybody else can't do that. That's just what I'm comfortable with, but I don't very often go with lower-end epoxy. Most of the time, I will use a um, digital scale that gets it right down as close as it can possibly be. Keep your temperatures right, that's very critical to curing. And finally, get to know the material. Experiment as much as possible. Um, use it on some little things that are gonna be thrown away, you don't have to worry about it. Just get comfortable with the chemicals. And I think that's just a few pointers that will uh, help you with epoxy work. For the last four months, I've had here in the shop a beta version of the Shaper Origin, but yesterday, check out what happened. Boom. My Shaper showed up. I'm definitely up now. Live. Didn't know this was going to turn into a live unboxing episode, did you? Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> Oh man, completely amped for this. Hello, baby. Oh. oh, did that get weird? <laughs> and I'm not sure if any, everybody's aware, but uh, about a year or so ago, um, Wes Swain because he had seen how amped I was about the technology of the Shaper at Maker Faire last year. Uh, he put together a GoFundMe and a bunch of people pitched in um, to buy that for me. And, you know, the generosity makes gives me uh, skin crawlies right now. So, uh, I've gotten so much from the community, not only this type of thing, but just reinforcement of what I do. I appreciate you guys big time. All the guys that I've met over at Shaper have been really good to me and it's been an absolute honor to you know do some early user interface testing with them they are really good people I think trying to make a super cool new product also this week the big news in the world was the the Falcon Heavy test launch that Elon Musk and SpaceX did Amazing stuff from, you know, a scientific level, all that. But I'm going to put a link below for a news conference that Elon Musk did directly after the launch. I mean, like, maybe a half an hour after, very, very soon. And, you know, it would be easy to just go over all of the science and all that. But if you have a half an hour, I want you to study this interview from a creative thinking point of view. 
I consider Elon Musk one of the premier creative thinkers of our time. He was asked, what did you learn from the launch? And one of the things that hit me, he said, I keep thinking of the, the thousand things that could go wrong, and I'm just amazed when they didn't. So, you know, in spite of looking into the face of overwhelming odds of failure, they still proceeded on. I think it's huge for creative thinkers to think like that. He was also asked why he put a car in space. And he said, it's kind of silly fun, but I think silly and fun things are important. I think that's an excellent thing to be reminded of as creative people that, you know, relax on yourself a little bit and the silly fun things can, can be very, very important into both your development and to creating cool stuff. And finally, the last little bullet point that I want to bring out of this news conference was the fact that he said, it's still tripping me out. You got to love it. You got to love just the amazement when, you know, you create cool stuff. So I asked my friend Lori over at Project Happy Life to watch the interview and see what she got out of it. She was kind of digging on the fact of how artistically Elon and the crew over at SpaceX solved a problem. We need a payload for the Falcon Heavy. Typically, when there's a payload needed for a new rocket, you shoot a hunk of concrete into space. But that's absolutely no fun. So how do you artistically solve that problem? You launch your car into space. You, you get your payload and you get the public totally engaged in science and what you're doing, rocket launches. There's a huge portion of the population that doesn't care about rocket launches, but they care about how Starman is doing in the Tesla, you know, rocketing off into space. That's well done. So new on the sticker board this week is the House of Chop. Phil's a cool guy, does a lot of amazing welding, and he has a cool car. Check him out on Instagram, the House of Chop. So thanks for hanging out with me, episode two, Berkey on a Barstool, and as always, Berkey out.